This episode is sponsored by Dropbox. Before the International Space Station, before Skylab, before Sputnik, just one special satellite circled the Earth. The moon was around before the first cells divided. Every life form that's ever looked up has seen that same face. Since the first humans stood and walked, it's been our big round calendar in the sky, our constant companion. So I guess it must have been pretty terrifying when people looked up and saw this. <laughs> Thankfully, science has taught us that a giant monster does not, in fact, get angry and eat the moon before painting it blood red. It's just a lunar eclipse. As bright as the moon looks in the night sky, what we're really seeing is sunlight, and the percent of its face that's illuminated depends on where it is in relation to the Earth. At the point in its orbit where the moon is at its closest point to the sun, we see, or rather don't see, a new moon. At the point in its orbit where the moon is farthest from the sun, we get a full moon. But if the Earth is sitting here in the middle, why doesn't Earth cast a shadow during every full moon? The moon's orbit around the Earth is tilted by a few degrees relative to our path around the sun, so during most full moons, the Earth isn't directly in the way. But every so often, that full moon happens right in the middle of Earth's shadow. Lunar eclipses are pretty common as astronomical phenomena go. On average, there's about one and a half lunar eclipses per solar year. But really that means anywhere from zero to three because I'm not really sure how you get half of an eclipse. Not every eclipse is the same. Like every orbit, the moon follows an elliptical path. And when a full moon lines up with its closest approach to Earth, we call that a supermoon. The lunar face can appear up to 14% bigger and 30% brighter. Well, that may sound like a lot, but it's only like the difference between a 15 inch pizza and a 16 inch pizza. Chances are your eyes wouldn't even notice if you didn't know it was happening. The opposite phenomenon, by the way, where the full moon happens at the farthest point is called an apogee syzygy, which is a really lame name. Seriously, we need to change that. Um, I shall call it mini moon. Oh my God. <laughs> September 27th, 2015 marked the rare occasion where a supermoon and a lunar eclipse happened simultaneously. A coincidence that won't occur again until 2033. Did you miss it? We've got you covered. Because the sun is so much bigger than the Earth, we cast a two-part shadow on the moon. The wider outer shadow, where the Earth is only partially blocking the sun's light, is called the penumbra. The moon barely dims as it enters this part. The narrow shadow in the middle, where Earth totally blocks the sun's light, is called the umbra. Temperatures on the moon can quickly fall from over 100 degrees Celsius in the sun to minus 150 degrees Celsius in Earth's shadow. But then, something very weird happens. We can understand this better if we take a little trip to the moon. A lunar eclipse from the moon looks a lot like a solar eclipse from Earth. During totality, where the moon is completely inside Earth's umbra, a tiny bit of the sun's light is bent through our atmosphere and comes out the other side, like a ring-shaped lens. But along that journey, the shorter wavelengths have been filtered out by the air around us. It's the same reason that sunsets and sunrises are red on Earth. In fact, when we stare at the red color of a lunar eclipse, we're seeing every sunrise and sunset on Earth reflected back at us at the same time. That's an experience worth waiting for. Keep looking up and stay curious. This episode was sponsored by Dropbox. Whether you're designing, presenting, writing, or building something, Dropbox makes it simple to work together on any file. Because if you can work with anyone, anywhere, any way you want, the world will be full of more interesting things. Dropbox, all yours. Eleanor was an elephant. Sick and injured, she fell behind her herd and collapsed. Scientists watched as another elephant named Grace ran to her side and tried to lift her up. Sadly, she couldn't. Eleanor died. Over the next several days, her body was visited by five different groups of elephants, some completely unrelated to her. They circled the body, caressing it with their feet and trunks, never out of sight, even when lions and hyenas moved in. 